But if I have a different opinion, I'll let you know. And if your opinion isn't a good one, I'll let you know. Would you take Bo or Max Domi right now? When Jim Benning gets to the table and he sees JT Miller, I think that's what made him hit the gas. You make those like trades. Look at what he's done being emerged into our lineup. It's night and day. He's going to be our next Sammy Sal, besides playing half a game a year. So sick of people acting like he hasn't been that bad. Dude, he has been atrocious. Get these mental gymnastics you have to go through to get to Colin's mind space on this trade is just... To me, it's way too much. Mr. Horvat has been bad. He's our captain. This is such a stupid take, Colin. <laughs> All right. So we're back for another episode. The boys are ready to go. If you're listening right now, you heard our new intro, which I hope you really enjoyed. Um, it took about three weeks to make that. And, uh, <laughs> it took a couple hours, but I like it. I hope you guys do too. It kind of sets, I think it's perfect. It sets the stage for what we do and, um, kind of almost broke the up the form. podcast, yeah. Know, yeah, it took <laughs> when I first it's funny when I first made this intro, I got a good story to say. I included, I didn't include Austin in it at all, I, like none of his audio at all. So I got ahead of myself, and I'm like, fuck that guy. But uh, <laughs> then it got off, then in the group chat, it got all awkward, and I felt really, I felt really bad. Um, but no, yeah, it's good. We, added him in, we had. We had it in there and uh, made it right, but I like it. So it was, yeah, no. we're happy with I know. I think it's awesome. It's great. So yeah. Anyways, we're back to the episode here. We got an hour and a half until puck drop here in Vancouver against the Flames. And uh, before we start with any of the topics, I want to discuss Aquilini's comments because um, I think his comments can be a turning point in the season because it kind of clears the head a little bit. Like a lot of the players, I'm sure didn't know what was going to go, what was happening. Maybe Travis Green didn't even know, and now the guys can just breathe and go. Oh, whatever happens, nothing's going to happen during the season. And uh, how do you guys see it? Because I think it could be a turning point. Uh, we'll start with Austin on this one. Yeah, I mean, I think you played it out pretty straight. Like that's exactly it. I think it just kind of sets a tone. of just guys don't like get this off the books. Don't worry about it. Just relax. Yeah. take this out of the locker room a little bit, hopefully to help them just focus on playing hockey again. But um, yeah. And at the end of the day too, I fully support the decision, I guess, from a standpoint of being a business owner, just trying to do that, like just settle everyone down a little bit and just try and focus on playing well. And hopefully the media will do that. So we do start to play well, I guess. Yeah. Played our best game of the year last night by a mile. Mm-hmm. I'd say. Well, I mean, okay, so there's a couple things to touch on. I think, okay, first off, look, if you're not wanting to get rid of Travis or Jim because you don't want to add any cost to the books from a business standpoint, or if something makes him want to keep this group together for a while longer, he's not ready to fire anyone because for whatever reason, he still thinks there's – you know, good things going on or who knows it could be, but if you're not ready to fire someone for any of those reasons, you do have to come out and say, you're not going to fire people, but there's a flip side to this because he didn't just say, look, I'm not ready to fire anyone. He laid out and said, he came out and he said, I like our plan. We have a long-term plan and we're going to stick to the long-term plan. Um, Okay. That would be fine, but there's no evidence that this team and organization has had a long-term plan. We've talked about it multiple times. The plan seems to change on a whim. So it becomes very hard to believe that there actually is a long-term plan. And that leads me to believe that he just doesn't want to add any cost to the books at this point, which is fine from a business perspective, but as a fan of the team, that's, you know, disappointing. Mm -hmm. So I don't know. I would have rather him just came out and said, look, we're not making any changes anytime soon rather than come yeah. out and give this bullshit thing about how there's a the greater plan. And uh, it's just like, it, it just gets almost um, demoralizing as a fan who's watching the team yeah. who can kind of see through the bullshit and say, just be straight up with me. But instead he's trying to act like he's um, wise and uh, has a better understanding than the fans. If he doesn't actually mean what he says, and that pisses me off as a fan because it's like I'd rather How, be honest with me. Can, can you honestly tell you he does? Because it, it's you have well, to like believe you said, him. You have to believe him that there 
has been a plan in place the whole whole time and they've been following it. Yeah. Sure, but like you said, you could be he could have easily said, All right, now we're not looking to make changes, and that wouldn't have been a big deal if you said that. That would have been great. Time. That's fine. But the the problem is he came in and said, We have this great plan and we're gonna stick to this great plan, but there's no evidence that there's ever been a plan followed. So that makes me think he's bullshitting us, which is annoying. Well, to me, okay. I guess I'll play devil's advocate again here, but I'm kind of supporting this idea that there is a long-term plan in the sense I've always said this off season is Benning's off season. Even we kind of touched on this in the Walker uh, interview. And he said this as well, you know, most fans really believe the last off season was his off season. And that's yeah. fair. You can have your judgment. I have mine and I'm yeah. thinking more long-term he's done. And, and this is actually something we didn't really, um, I think do a fair job with in the Benning, uh, you know, deep dive. We didn't really give him the praise for Quinn Hughes, Elias Pedersen, and making the picks of Ulevi, Thatcher Demko, yeah. Ulevi, Can't which so some people will say, so but exactly. Um, we didn't really praise him enough for these picks that he has made, and not that all of them were clear front run picks, as, as many people like mm -hmm. someone on this podcast really scrutinized the Pedersen pick at the time. Well, there's, a the of, there's a lot of there's a lot of these things said. that there's a lot of these things that we didn't really touch on that i don't think we're fair and to me yeah i think the long-term plan was securing your centerman securing your defenseman securing your goalie you have guys like bester jt surrounding him surrounding them rather and locking these guys up this off season and making the one or two picks and trades that he needs to will be mm -hmm. the thing that shows the long-term plan in my sense look the pd yeah. the pd pick is definitely his best. I mean, a lot of people could would say that Hughes was a no-brainer. The, the PD pick was not. It was very. It's his best thing he's done as a general manager. There's no doubt about it. Um, it was a great pick. But that's not. And he has done some good things. But he's done, I would argue, probably more bad. Um, but aside from that, that's not. Like, can you really say that they've had? what resembles any consistency in their, their yeah, I agree approach. with the consistency thing. I agree with that completely. I can't disagree. There hasn't been consistency. Like there was never a time where we actually said we we're going to rebuild and none of, and they never used the word ever until it was evident that we did. And then while the rebuilding, they're trading away picks at the same time and signing these guys to these contracts, which I get, you need to, to uh, implement, you need to, you need to, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? whatever improvise to, yeah <laughs> no but uh but you need, I, to, I, to, you need to help the young kids let me right? hop like, in yes. and add, yes. add to this okay, you go before ahead, you go I'll austin do one more thing because we can i i'm with colin right where he was he's he, he they needed to make do some things to help shelter guys and they did that and, it, and and it was i liked the direction and i, I was decently pro betting i wasn't in love with betting but i i at least wanted to see where he was going but then we had that one season where we sniffed the playoffs and then they tried to turn it they went and they signed myers and they said we're going for the playoffs when the, the plan should have remained a slower progression and they should have kept making steps towards being a good team rather than trying to jump right in the moment they saw that we had a couple decent pieces i had one thing here before we yeah go continue. ahead and i i got people one don't more. realize yeah, okay. that when benny was hired he was hired by aquiline because aquiline wanted to bring him in to quickly turn it around and that's what aquiline wanted and then benny's like yeah i can do that so i mean it's not like benny had a vision it's not like he like he had to align with aquiline's vision if if it didn't align like he might not have done the job like aquiline wanted a guy to come here and quickly try to turn it around now and, my know. question to you guys would be Actually, it's not even a question. Something we touched on in the last podcast, too, was how many players, Anton Roussel, Brandon Sutter, Sven Bershi, and I'll put my uh, Furland in this category of prior to their injury, which Furland, the writing was kind of on the wall with him, but at the end of the day, it's not like it's costing us anything. But prior to their injuries, their contracts made sense. And if they were still playing at the ability that they were, or even in the lineup for this sake, this team may look a lot different and we might be, you know, one or two years ahead of where we are now. That's not, I would say completely on Jim Benning that these guys got injured and these, then these keys that were to step in and fill your bottom six, which, you know, a bottom six is what helps you, you know, win a cup and letting your young guys work out your top six. I don't think that 
what those moves were at the time, like mm. were the plan. I don't know. It, it makes sense if I look at it back now. But and, those and, are and, and you know what? And and they always use the word retool for a reason because they never wanted to fully commit because they felt that if they surrounded these guys with a supporting cast, they could do something. And it's true. I think we are seeing that. But when all of those dominoes continuously fall beneath the cracks and aren't helping us, and like you say, end up just being cap crap, that sucks. And at the end of the day, hindsight's twenty twenty with GMs. I'll always say that. And those aren't the contracts, that, though, that are really concerning, right? Like, those ones, I, I never really hated those ones because they're all coming off the books now as PD and Hughes get off their ELCs. Like the, the what I was hoping for, and we can argue, man, people might have different visions than me, but I was hoping when those contracts, we already had them on the book and we're getting better and better. I was hoping we'd wait and say, okay, we want to leave the maximum amount of flexibility for as PD and Hughes hit 23, 24, and they're into their best years. We want to have that cap flexibility, get all our core pieces signed, and now look at the best way forward at that point to weaponize our cap space in such a way to put the best roster around them. So I liked the idea of these shorter term deals that got us to this place that was fine. But the problem is when we start adding these longer term contracts for guys that are aging now, and it's just going to jeopardize that time when PD and Hughes are the best players they can be, which is when we should have been pushing for a cup. And now we're going to have to push it down the road a couple more years till those contracts come off the books. That to me, that's why I feel like there is not a plan. That's the concerning part. Yeah. And that's well, where I would say to my point is, you know what, addressing is something and then it end up, you know, a player being injured or one, two things not going the right way and having to readdress that. That's not a hundred percent on the gym is all I'm trying to say. But yeah. to your point, I do get that. It does make it harder. And like you said, these yeah. certain contracts aren't the ones that you are concerned about, but they're the ones that everyone points at to. We could have got to Foley if we hadn't had this. We could have got this player and kept Tanev if we didn't, you know, and, and everyone wants to just pick and choose these uh, these contracts and stats. As, one one thing I'll add to that is I, yeah. one thing I'll add to that is because you guys won't shut up and let me talk. <laughs> is, uh, is I don't like I understand you mean like the bad contracts of Harrison and Myers, but like if you're building a team and and you add big contracts, like it's not like, like the players we added, like Schmidt and Sch like I'm not I'm saying Schmidt in my in my brain and my and, and Miller they're not available very often, so you just go for it regardless of your plan in my opinion. That's the way I see it. You go for it. You make Miller those trades because those guys are very rarely available. Miller's age is fine, right? Like he still fits yeah. in where he'll be a a pretty darn good player when Hughes mm -hmm. and Petey are having their best years, just to me. Cause, and like, yeah. I want to, I want to um, clarify. I only come from the space of, I want to win a Stanley cup. I like, if, if I owned the Vancouver Canucks, I would definitely take profits way more into account. But for me, all I care about is that we win a Stanley cup one day. So what I would like to see is plan for when you think Hughes and PD are in their prime years and right at the start of those three, four years have as much cap room to build the best possible team around them at that point. So the problem is those, the Myers and the Schmidt contracts probably hurt that era uh, of the Canucks. So I would have rather, and you're right, you know, maybe there's like from a business dollar point and, of view, it probably you know makes what? sense. And you know what? I wouldn't even, I'm not even really thinking that standpoint. I'm just thinking too, what have we seen in the best of these guys time with us? If we were, would you argue that we were one or two pieces from really winning that Vegas series and who knows what, like if we were really there, I don't know. Like, I feel like we had one or two pieces that we could have brought it. I don't know. To fully wasn't injured. I feel like it could have been a whole different story. There's a lot of these things that if we had a Furland in his prime really playing in our lineup, who knows? It could be a yeah, whole lot right. different. Or like I'm, a really great defenseman. Is all I'm trying to say is like if we, if everything had worked out as planned, yeah. who knows what that series could have been like. And that could have been that time where we look back and said, look at this was this move led to them making a cup final or et cetera. So mm -hmm. I just, I don't know. I'm trying to uh, have a little bit of, empathy for the folks and be the be the one who will stand up for them yeah that's fair uh yeah if if you add a really great uh two-way puck moving defenseman to that team 
last year, maybe they do make more noise. Uh, go, you know. Deep. I don't know. I against Vegas, we looked like we were definitely the lesser. It was way too bad. like against St. Louis. Sure, yeah. we looked good, but against Vegas, I don't feel that way. I don't. But it was like, a team that was young and wasn't ready yet. What That's if you added, um, like, give me a second. Let me think of something. Um, someone say something else. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I like I said, I just I just think that, I don't feel that had, close, had, like... had everything worked out, I feel like we would be one or two years ahead of where we are. And yes, That's it's true. unfortunately led for us to make one or two moves that we might not have enjoyed and are hurting us. Now. Yeah. That's the reality like of it. That's the reality said, of sports. Like, Go ahead. Like Walker said he's not the worst GM, he's not the best GM. That's a good summary. He's not the best, he's not the worst. And there's no need to overthink it from there, in my opinion. Um, He's not Shirelli, yeah, that's for sure. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Um, well, I'm gonna go to the next topic because you can't. Are you able to think of what you want there? Or? Well, I just, I just think like I, I, I'm having a hard time finding an exact player. But imagine if, and this is just a crazy idea, but like let's say LA decided they wanted to just get as many picks as possible, and Doughty was on the block at the deadline last year, and somehow we pieced together a package to add Doughty to our team. <sighs> That you probably would have been a pretty. Player away. You think we're one game breaking player away? Uh, that caliber of defenseman, Espe- last, especially last with year? yeah, especially with yeah. the goaltending oh, and yeah, defense we had last you. year. I think yeah. I'm not disagreeing with you. That's fair. That's a fair point. I, maybe we could be one caliber player like that away. I don't know. On but that team last saying. year, honestly, Austin got me thinking about it with his comment, and <laughs> yeah, honestly, he's not wrong. So yeah. Okay. All right. That was pretty good. Uh, so the next topic was if we play the way we did the first two games against Calgary, which it's gonna be very hard to keep doing that. Calgary didn't play that good, but nonetheless, that's like I, I'd say like there's not much more we can do. Like you know, we played really well. Are we better than Winnipeg and Edmonton? Because right now, those are the only two teams we have to beat to get that fourth spot. Not if we keep good. playing this way, like the last two if games, we keep playing this way, for forty more games. Well, let's say like we try our best to play that way. It's not going to be consistent. No team does it that way, but I'm saying if we show we're capable of that and we become more consistent with it, do you think we can do it? You go. I think Edmonton. I think Edmonton. Yeah. I don't really know much yeah. about Winnipeg. I haven't watched them enough to really see what, if they're a good team or not. Like, I don't know if they're just like, if one area yeah. of them is not as strong as the others, I don't know. So to be hmm. completely fair. They have weapons. I don't know if they even have themselves figured out yet because I don't. I know Edmonton, is yeah. really, yeah. really a big. I agree. Key, so. I agree with the Edmonton. I don't know about Winnipeg yet. I, I don't know if we're better than that. When I look I at know. the division, I see Ottawa's bad, and I see Toronto and Montreal playing pretty decently. I don't know how well because it's hard to judge with how many teams are struggling. But you see Winnipeg, you see Vancouver, you see Calgary, and you see Edmonton. And honestly, I think all four teams are playing pretty bad and having. They're all having their own yeah. unique struggles. And two of these teams are going to make the playoffs. We've dug ourselves a bit of a hole, but honestly, it's going to be hard. But whatever two teams figure it out, there's a good chance that they go and make take those spots. I mean, it, we definitely have more ground to cover than the other teams, but I just think all four of us are playing horribly, and it's just going to take two, two of the teams figuring out just some basic uh, – consistency and strategy to win some games and just a little more effort yeah. maybe but like they're all they're and they're all having unique problems like calgary looks like they don't care half the time yeah. Yeah, um, yeah so that's weird i think edmonton like we've seen it for how many years now four years this is just edmonton um yeah like Enough, yeah I, I, we can be better if no team figures it out, yeah, they'll probably sneak into a spot. But if two of the teams start playing half decent hockey, I think Edmonton will just fall behind. And then Winnipeg, yeah. I think there's a good likelihood they figure it out. So, but who knows? Okay, do you think Winnipeg's a better team on paper? Honestly, I think Calgary is the one team that's best on paper. And I think Edmonton has problems you can't really solve and then i think us and winnipeg are pretty much in the same boat fair enough okay yeah and i'm not worried about calgary toronto montreal i'm not worried about them because they're probably going to finish at the top 
We'll see. Yeah. I mean, honestly, man, like Calgary. I think Calgary figures it out. They're too good not to. Maybe it's one... a, I don't know. Like, go ahead, sorry. No, the one thing I'll see about Calgary over the next couple of games is I don't know. I don't know if I really trust their defense. Like, I've never been a huge Giordano fan. Like, he's just he's just kind Actually, of a he, pylon out there. Just guys just for his players at all. Like, yeah, you know, he's just kind just... of a piece of crap but i don't know i don't, know. I don't really watch. trust the depth of their defense and even kind of looking online today a lot of uh, calgary people were explaining how last game kind of exposed their defense can the i say of, something to that in the preseason yeah. pawn i thought we were raving about their defense you guys were just i like their defense he did and then i did bring up my questions because i did start to look at who they had and like i don't know mm-hmm. i said it was cool to see nikita nesterov but at the end of the day i don't know if he's an nhl defenseman so I think mm. there's just certain guys on there that I don't understand. And, and, and yeah, I mean, I don't know. I like I said, I don't watch them day in day out. I yeah, started to take a little look at them, <laughs> but I, 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 thought, I don't know. I don't think it's a personnel issue. Like a lot of their issues are guys not trying. To me, it looked like in it's the last two games. It's been that way for years. Uh, it's yeah. not like this, man. This is bad. Like. I just, I've always noticed God, Gaudreau and Monaghan are just, they've always been like out there floating at times. It's, yeah, those two do. I've but like usually, man, like it's not just them though. It's all four no, lines no. and like, I don't know. Maybe they're they kind can, of, maybe, maybe, yeah, no, go ahead. I was going to say, they're kind of in that unique position where they need yeah. a game player as well. Like, I don't know, like someone out there to just bring it. And yeah. the thing is, is maybe having all these guys on defense and, like I'm looking at it now. I I don't know who Mackey. I think he played his first game against us. Valamaki. He's Valamaki. Yeah. Hannafin and Anderson. I do like them, but at, you mm-hmm. know, at the end of the day, I don't know a whole lot about them. Yeah. Giordano. Yeah. They're all the, all these guys are making around five six million, and that handcuffs them to having somebody who really brings it to the table. So they need Surprise. someone, like you said, a, a big player like a Doughty or someone who can actually just bring it up for them like they need a huge well they already life. have they already have to chuck i'm surprised they don't feed off his energy he's like the one guy who brings it every game he's but he player. hasn't like he he's been dirty but man his hustle on the actual play mm-hmm. has been like that much honestly play, it's man. they bring majiapani has been the one player on their team where you could mm-hmm. say okay he's giving her every night but yeah he's the only guy that i would trade for tomorrow yeah. i was worried about our locker room their locker room is more concerning. If I'm really? a Calgary yeah. fan, I, like they have pieces and the pieces just aren't trying. And like I would rather have our problems where I feel like we're undercoached than a locker room that seems like they just don't give a fuck. Like, well, half the time this year we played our games, we look like we don't give a fuck. It's been inconsistent. It's hard to yeah. judge it. I mean, yeah, play, some we, players. We, we, well, oh, and, and at the same and at the same time too, though the guys that we're seeing playing that inconsistent and sluggish are not the guys that we're used to seeing that. Like if I'm looking at their top six right now. You've got a Sam Bennett who doesn't even want to play there. You got a Monahan and Goudreau who we just talked about have you know never really bring it to the table. And their top line, you know, is Dubé, Lindholm, Kachuk. Kachuk just kind of goes out there and it's like his brother. It's just dirty hockey. It's not a very big energy that helps the lineup it just kind of yeah. goes out there and, and drives the other team nuts and sometimes helps yeah. them more i feel like lindholm probably has that same kind of just a little bit of scrappiness in him but nothing really i don't know yeah he has never really shined for them or even really for carolina in my eyes like he's never he had, stood he's out always, yeah he's he had a good stuff. run he's last year but they yeah. demoted backland to put lindholm in center they demoted backland to the third line and like Backlund, I think he was choked. I don't think he liked that. Oh, no. I, again, I don't <laughs> Well, it's kind of bullshit. Time. Like, yeah. he'd been for ye- like three years straight a great two way centerman that really just solidified their top six. And then the new guy comes in, gets traded, really less proven than him, and gets put in the second line center. And now Backlund's on, he was already on shutdown duty, but he's on shutdown line with forward wingers that aren't really that great and i don't know it just something it just well why has lindholm's ever been like that big time player well, he's he had like 80 points he's, well no one what i mean is he's a good complimentary piece but he's not like a guy to go out there and, and charge up your lineup i don't think i don't see him yeah. at all 
just like just like Austin said, he's never been that way. You can't expect that out of him, you know. So, um, I don't know. I mean, I don't want to watch him in Calgary, but if he, if he yeah. needs someone to charge your lineup up, then yeah, I can see that. Welcome to the Calgary cast. But yeah, yeah I'd like to take us back because, like, <laughs> I really do. I've been thinking about it a lot, and I'm like, I've we've seen two games of the Canucks that have been quite good, and sixteen before that that were pretty disappointing. I'm not ready to say that we're going to be good for the rest of the season. Oh, well, me neither, yeah. I hope we can. Let's start. We need, At some point, we're going to have to win five or six in a row if we want to be back yeah. in the running. But, yeah. you know, let's build on this. I really hope tonight and the next game and the next game we start seeing just the same level of play. And if we can do that and we can do it for three, four more games, I'll start to maybe have some confidence. But I really think you have those four teams in the Canadian division and – Two of mm-hmm. them are going to figure it out, and let's try to be one of those two. Um, do you have confidence in Demko to hold the fort at the end of the day? I'm not saying he'll play like Marstrom. There's, he's not going to, but do you have confidence he can at least hold the fort? Because at this moment, I don't know if I do. I think it really depends what you mean by hold the fort. I mean – Well, make make the big timely saves every now and then. You need your goalie to do that stuff. Just make those saves. Don't, you know, get 50 saves a game like Marstrom, but be a starting goalie. I think some you know? people – they think that the average goaltender in the NHL is a lot better than it actually is. Um, most goalies give up bad goals every now and then, and most goalies yeah. don't make huge saves. That's why the great goaltenders, Markstrom, Luongo when we had them, even Ryan Miller when we had them, these good goalies we've had, we were lucky to have them. They're unique, and you it's great to have one. Um, do I think Demko can be an average to slightly above average goalie for us yes and i think that's all you can expect but do i think that the yeah i do but do i think that fans are going to be happy with that no because i think fans don't realize what that even means i think he'll let in a goal that most goalies let in and fans will get you know on him think he has to make every save it's just not reality in the nhl though well one thing i'll say to that is all i expect him is if he can keep a goals against the average of two point let's say between 50 and and the save returns is 920, that's good to me. It doesn't need to be all score numbers, but that's good to me. Yeah, 920 isn't realistic. Mark yeah. has had 916 I, last year. Okay, fine. I don't know. 9, 9, 9, 9 10 to 930. With our defense, I think anything less than, the, way, the quality of chances we give up, we can't be expecting these numbers. I don't think it's going to be to be able to, to, to do You that. can't expect that of them, though. No, you can't. Yeah, I think that's question. unfair. That's my question. That's my question. That's what I was asking. I think that the change it can't be expected that way the way we're going to get better is not by Demko becoming a, a great goalie it's going to be coming by improved team play yeah and, and Colin I think I think just I think to bring a little context to like Vasilevsky's got a 933 and Markstrom's got a 925 like those are two of the best who do I it. know stop the puck day in day out like You've got to have ridiculous numbers to I know. put up a nine twenty. No, all I'm trying to say. I, so I know, I know. I think my point. Like we're not trying to cross properly. Yeah, one hundred percent cross properly. Um, I think anything less than a nine hundred save percentage isn't going to be good enough. That's fine. Yeah. Well, I mean, at the end of the day, you look at my my favorite goalie in the NHL, Sergei Bobrovsky. <laughs> like he's got worse stats than Thatcher Demko right now. Oh, by mile. He's got like, and it's oh, ridiculous. Mind, so, and hey, and he's and he's five one and one. How are they so, winning game? So <laughs> he hasn't been bad. He has not been bad. I'll tell you right now. He was on I'm a Columbus watching. team that played very tight defensively, so his stats were high. And then people were surprised when he went to Florida that plays a way more run and gun style. He, they give up a lot of high quality chances, but in return get a lot of high quality chances. He and, happens to save more than the guy across the ice. Yeah, barely. Um, like right now, he's got an eight eight four save percentage. Like that's, that's ridiculous. Awful. Like, awful. like Demko yeah. is eight ninety nine. How could you defend that? How could you defend that? That's, but that's why. I, if you're giving up these great quality chances, but in return getting great quality chances, and your goalie saves eight eighty four, but the goalie across the ice only saves eight hundred, then you're winning. It's it's all style of play has to factor into these stats. It's not straight. And you know, never, every goalie faces the same quality. You're never going to win a playoff series like that. I don't know. No, I, yeah, no, you're right. I mean, yeah. I 
that's all I, I mean and that's all i just i mean yeah at the end of the day i don't think demko's there yet i think it's it really oh, yeah, sucked sure. having him play that well in the playoff series honestly um yeah. just because it brought up this hype and then also makes a gm like benning question whether bringing markstrom back makes sense because of this mm-hmm. and and has all these mental games so yeah i don't think he's there and Holpe not being able to make one save for us it doesn't <laughs> help at all like it's he needs to be bad. the guy who can make He's one really or better. two saves and make, like that's all i'm asking that's what i meant when i asked the question can he be that guy who makes one or two good saves a game that we need and lately we haven't been getting it that's no and i expect yeah. to hope to be that guy and he hasn't been close to it yeah do you guys think that they've been below average for an NHL goalie? Call? Yes, yes. Lately, before the last two games, yeah, I'd say so. But our defense mm-hmm. isn't helping, so it's hard, kind of hard to judge. Yeah, I don't think no, they have a judge, low average. It's but tough like, to judge the big picture, you know, right now. I don't know. There's just a lot of goals that can be stopped. Are. There's been a lot of goals that can be stopped. That's the way I see it. So, that's a tough question to answer, to be honest. Yeah, no, I um, mean... I was going to say, Holpe's stats are just about the same. They're all about the same yeah. as Poprovsky and, and uh, Demko. So, I mean, I guess that's average now, or that's worth $10 million a year. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no kidding. Um, should we talk Should we talk trade deadline in this podcast? If shit goes sideways, getting us necessary? Not yet. I don't know. What are you – What I mean, here, um, let's, just, let's just do a quick, like – what are your guys' thoughts? Yeah, should be the move that. at a trade deadline right now. I think if it goes sideways, then well, you got to look at who's expiring. Sutter is expiring. Uh, Pearson's expiring. Uh, well, there's a couple more guys. I don't have them off the top of my head, but mm-hmm. like, do you sell off and just like you got to get something for those guys? And how do you navigate that in the season? Even like, in, in your opinion, you know? I think if uh, me personally, I think you take advantage of a team like Florida who's got a little bit i also don't really know how to navigate through the cap space this year because yeah. like the one yeah. site i look at shows everybody in the negatives almost so i'm like i don't know mm-hmm. who actually has space or what like it still says tampa bay is minus like 17 million so i don't know what is going on <laughs> but um i think taking advantage of a team like that and i think you still will have some opportunities to move somebody like roussel or sutter based on mm-hmm. you know getting somebody a team that's looking to build depth in their bottom six and at the end of the day you can make an argument for Roussel especially if you can bring someone back just for a, a, you know a small one-year cap dump or something like that but do you do you keep Roussel and then try to resign him at a cheaper price because you still need a third line center going forward Roussel or sorry or be, you mean Sutter Sutter, Sutter. Oh, okay like um, who's your third I line mean, center going forward I mean, if he wants to come back for really cheap, yeah. If you cheap, yeah, I would do that. That's why I'd almost hold on to him at this point. Maybe, I don't know. It's not worth that much. But, yeah. Yeah, I don't know. I think I'd try and take advantage of moving one of those guys. I mean, yeah, only, I don't know. Only one I think I would try and move is yourself. Or like an Edler. Or Edler, yeah. Edler could be a hot, hot, a decently hot commodity. I think you'd move him if shit goes sideways. You try to at least, for sure. Teams would, teams would like to have him. I think. Yeah, that's the only really guy who's going to be worth. It's not really. It wouldn't be a good deadline at all. We don't really have anything that's crazy worth anything, and it's not really. I mean, you. I've seen players go for more, like guys like Edler go for a lot more at a deadline. Yeah. And uh, then I, I don't know they're worth. So I, I, I wouldn't be surprised even if you can find a team who's got a young player on a one-year contract and you can do a swap and maybe there's a negotiation opportunity there to bring someone back. So I don't know. There, yeah. There's that might be there, but his cap hit also might be somewhat concerning. Actually, it's only half a year. So realistically, it's only going to be like 3 million. Yeah, it wouldn't be that. Well, yeah, exactly. You're right. Cause he's 6 million right now. Um, one one so... name I'll add to that, that we could, I think, probably actually get maybe something half decent for is Pearson because of his stats. Um, Mm -hmm. I actually think that they will be shopping Pearson if we were to be far enough out of the playoffs. 
And yeah. Pearson's the type of guy, because of his stat line, someone will offer him way more than he's worth. So I don't think there's really any hope we even resign him on a cheap deal. And I, yeah. I mean, that I think he's going to be an anchor of a contract for a team down the road. But yeah, I'd move him in a heartbeat. I'll take a draft pick. I don't care. Second. Yeah. Sweet. I, I, I was going to say third, honestly. Said, but yeah, second would be nice. He, he wants to come back. He said he wants to, but I don't want him back. I don't think he I, brings enough. I just, I average. don't see he's how he. Average. Yeah, I don't. I don't see him anywhere in the lineup. No, I mean he's too average. He's not a guy that I'd see. He want to come with LA, but that's because it doesn't mean he was great on that team. Like he's just nothing special about him. He's okay. I don't know. And with his stat line, I fully expect some team to give him like four years at like four and a half million. It's I mean. Yeah, he's not worth that at all. <laughs> Screw that. Screw that. Yeah. No, he's yeah. He's he's good at getting empty netters or assists on empty netters, but he's all right. But I mean, he's just nothing. Not really worth overanalyzing, in my opinion. Him and Louis um, Erickson are the same player. Yeah. All right. Well, those are my topics. You guys have anything else, or should we yeah. do predictions? We can do what? predictions, but I want to, before we do predictions, what are you yeah. guys looking for tonight out of the Canucks? That's kind of what I'm curious about. You know, you come into this game, two better games um, with a lot more um, structured play. Uh, let way less yeah. mistakes, way less people floating back defensively. Uh, so that's good to see. Now, what are we looking for coming in tonight's game to even build upon that uh, going forward? I want to see consistency. I want to see, even if we don't win, I want to see us play that way. That's the way we need to play. And if Calgary ups their game, well, I want to see us up our game because they, they didn't play point. well the last two. I want to see us match it. Um, I think these next two games will be very telling because Calgary had two horrible games and Markstrom stood on his head. But if we can play consistent and up our game while they do, that says a lot. So that's what I want to see. Awesome. Yeah. I don't know. I'd like to see just some clean breakouts. I'd like to see just like some defensive zone structure. <laughs> like just continue to do what you're doing. Just make the smart decision. Make the easy pass. Don't overthink it. And yeah, let the play progress. Don't try and force it. That's all I like to say. Good structured hockey is what I, yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. I really hockey. liked what Colin said there. Um, if Calgary brings it, that he would like to see us up our game, that's a great point. I think that that would be really mm -hmm. nice. I also think, too, to add to mm -hmm. that, if they don't bring it and they look slow again, let's just fucking put them in their grave early then. Like, yeah. that would be nice. 100%. Too. Totally. Don't back down, though, is what I'm saying. Don't. This is a good challenge. It's a good mm -hmm. test. Don't back down. And it could be a huge confidence booster for the team if, if we don't back down and we see them up in their game. Yeah. But tonight's tonight's a very will be a very telling game for what to expect in the future, I think. Mm -hmm. So yeah, we're gonna uh, one more topic we can do. We'll end on this is uh, the Myers. Do we feel that Myers game will improve playing alongside Ole Levy? Because so far it has. And we will start with Mr. McGregor on this one. Yeah, well, I, one website that I found was really neat is uh, Left Wing Lock. If you guys haven't heard of it, they do a breakdown about every game and like mm -hmm. season altogether and the percentage of like line combination throughout a game, essentially, mm -hmm. and throughout the entire season. So right now, we've seen Myers and Schmidt play together for about 14.4% of the season, or like the line combinations of them being on the ice. Um, and we've seen Myers and Ulevi play together 10.8%. So that's basically about half. He's been pretty much with Schmidt or he's been with Ulevi. It's almost mm -hmm. been, you know, one or the other. So what I decided to do was I looked at every game that he's played with Ulevi. And at the end of the day, I wouldn't say that he's particularly played that much better statistically. Um, mm -hmm. He's about even. He's scored both of his goals playing with him. He's, you know, got a couple, one, one more point. Otherwise, they're about even. But the eye test says so much more different. Like, does, you can eh? tell yeah. he's so much more confident mm -hmm. and calm when he plays with Ulevi. And it's just mm -hmm. because, maybe it's just because of the way that he Ulevi plays, being a young guy, playing it safe and just trying to make the right defensive play. And that's someone he mm -hmm. needs. And every other situation that we've, the scrutinized him and he's looked so bad it's because 
he's been with somebody like Schmidt where they're both on that same level of like looking for the pinch, looking for that extra move that puts them both in a bad defensive situation. So yep. I'm totally. just excited to see where this keeps going. Cause this has been my hope since day one. So they seem yeah. to complement each other like so nicely. Like for example, when the other team is pushing towards our zone, entering the offensive zone, Myers likes to challenge and he lovely likes to drop back, which is very nice. And Myers got the long stick, so that's almost even ideal. And mm-hmm. the other thing that I've noticed is you levy will actually direct Myers on defense sometimes, which seems to be helping. <laughs> I don't know, man. It's such an it's worked so nicely. And hey, maybe it's just, you know, four um lucky games or whatever, and we won't see this consistently. But I think at this point you have to a, give them more minutes together, and B, kind of keep going with that for as you know, a while and see if it keeps going this way. I, I mean, breaking up would be madness. Yeah. I just hope that Adler and Schmidt can figure it out then because that's – they have to. They, they, have to. They, have they have to. They have to figure it out. They haven't been good. They haven't been good. It's been pretty rough still. That's mm-hmm. our worst pairing, I'd say. They're playing on our first pairing, but that's the worst pairing. So. In the last two games, yep. Yeah. Yeah, it hasn't been good. So they have and to, yeah. and you know what? It's it's another one of those situations where you're just in such a a weird bind with the lineup being the way it is. Like you can't take out Jordy Ben. Like he's been one of yeah. the better defenders. But but taking him out and and letting Schmidt and Hughes play together, maybe that's the right idea. But you, it's so hard to make that decision and be like, yeah, sorry, you're getting the hook. It's like what did I do wrong? <laughs> I did nothing wrong. So yeah. it, it's, it's very tough when you're making those day-to-day decisions, but uh, I mean, who knows what could be the right decision there because like we uh, saw Chatfield and Edler play together pretty well. So I don't, yeah, it, that's where you need to put someone like green needs to make that tough decision. I don't think Chatfield gets back to the lineup ever. He no. started to look way over his head at the a couple at the at the end of when before that taken out he was the last game not looking like he knew what the hell he was doing at all out yeah. there it was pretty bad it was very noticeable so well they put him was... and they put him and tried to put him in the same situation as Ulevi and I think that just showed what yeah. he's capable of Ulevi yeah. in that sense like it was exactly. like oh no he's not quite the same that's not just throw any new AHL yeah. defenseman in that position. It's like, no, not quite. Yeah. You need to be a bit smarter than that. I'm not yeah. sure. That's the Go crazy ahead. thing is like, if I'm, you know, for some reason want it, like, let's say Edler and Schmidt need to figure it out. If they mm. don't, then you have, you cannot mess with Myers and 11. If he does, that's crazy, yeah. but you really don't want to mess with Ben and Hughes either. You can you maybe yeah. try to, but exactly. like, that would be the one I would do if I felt like I had to. But I mean, Edler and Schmidt, with the amount of money they're making and the caliber of players they're supposed to be, they need to just fucking figure this out. I know. They have to. <laughs> if they do, they're great. But. You know, here's an idea. We just talked about this a little bit, but doesn't moving somebody like Edler right now do everything you were trying to accomplish as an organization? especially if you can make a good deal that gets them off the books, like you're shaking up the organization by getting rid of somebody who's a staple at this point. One of the last guys left from that run. Um, and, you know, is a, a face of the organization. And at the point. same time, we're trying to move that cap off our books anyway, and see if we can get a second round pick in return, something like that. It might well, be the, the right move to back, make right though. now. Okay, but who's gonna? Who would be put the? I thought I meant. I thought you meant like a trade to bring someone else in. I mean, like I swap. said, I, I said that earlier. I think that would make sense yeah. bringing someone young back. But in the terms yeah. of everything going on, you're already halfway through the season. Like I said, it's only a three million left on the books. That's not a lot for these teams. So, a, a draft mm. pick or a player back is fine. But I kind of like it, except for I have a really big problem with losing our best penalty killer at this point that's the only problem i have with it is i just don't know if i want to make this penalty kill worse it's the same reason why like yes beagle is a lot of money but i'm kind of glad we have beagle he's been great on the penalty kill these last two games Mm -hmm. and like i just it's already bad who's Mm -hmm. gonna step in for edler next year on the penalty kill well we still have him right it's one more year no this is last year so unless he comes back next year for one million dollars which i don't even know i would 
do that right now because, like you said, the situation we're in with our defense core, I don't know if that's even an option right now. It has you to need, be dirty you need, cheap. And, and you know what? I think the guy might be Olevi. Yeah. But, but I mean, that's putting a lot of confidence in a guy that we haven't seen that all from yet. Mm-hmm. So. Look, he's but, the best but, bet at this point. But, like, I yeah. like I think that's what's going to happen next year. Does, do I mean that he's ready for that now? I don't know, but no that's my bet. Yeah, no chance. So, Man, just, yeah. like, I don't know. Like, I don't get how people don't think he's good. Like, just the little plays he's making and the smart plays. Like, okay, <laughs> it was so funny. The other game, I think it was two games ago. It was one of the last two games. We had all this pressure. And Calgary, one of their defensemen finally got the puck, and they flipped it out. And a lot of times, I don't know if our defensemen just aren't thinking, but Levy just, he didn't try to hit anyone with a brilliant pass or anything. He just flipped it off the glass back into the offensive end so that the Calgary defenseman couldn't get a change. And it just hemmed them back in. And like, it was such a simple, easy play, but we don't make those so often. It was just so, it was so smart. It was such an intelligent little play. I don't know. It's just the guy has, he's, it just feels like he's smarter than everyone but Edler back there. Like, it's and just crazy. A hundred percent. That's what I've loved about him. And I'm not, not going to say that I, anywhere like Ulevi or the, the level of hockey I played was anywhere like him, <laughs> but the way I played hockey was just that, like, just go out there, simple. make the make the simple play, and at the end of the day, that paired me up with our most talented other defenders who were able to go out there and make those moves, make those plays, and feel comfortable because they just knew I'd be back there. And that's why, to me, I've always seen that with certain players, it's like, Myers, man, just sit back and relax for a minute. You'll get back to the fundamentals and you'll see the game a lot differently. You're putting yourself in so many pressure situations that you can't handle and it's clear. So there's just little things where just at the end of the day, I always just go back to the fundamentals. If, if it could work for me, <laughs> it could work for anybody. I, <laughs> I think at this point, anyone who doesn't like your levy is someone who's written them off in the past and just can't admit it. They just don't have eyes. They're blind. Well, that too, but I'm saying that they're trying to protect their opinion. Which they're the same guys who are who are who are protecting Myers every night that he doesn't play with (laughs) Ulevi. Yeah. So yeah. yeah. It's crazy, man. Like I some of the things fans and media is everyone. Like some of the the takes they have and that seem to be popular. It's it feels to me like you have to be watching a completely separate game for me or like you're just paying no attention to who actually has yeah. the you're just like you've heard that you levy might not be that good so you just blame everything on him i don't really understand it's like or he's the well, new to, guy so you blame him i don't get it man i think uh, half the time those guys are watching the game they're tweeting anyways i'm even watching the damn game there's tweeting stupid shit <laughs> that's what it seems like well and it's to yeah. that point too right like if you don't have evidence to refute the thing that's coming towards you, it's kind of like, oh yeah. oh yeah, maybe you're right. You've obviously looked into this. You you're thinking this way. Like, oh well, maybe they haven't. But you know, that's, <laughs> yeah. that just happens so often with people where it's like, unless you have a direct thought in the back of your mind of like, yeah. no, I know for a fact that's not right. It's like, uh, yeah, okay, they're probably oh. are right. So yeah, it just happens. All right, predictions for tonight's game. We will start with Dylan this time. Me, hey, okay. I yes. think Calgary was horrible. Yeah. And I think at some point we got to start getting some bounces. And I think at some point this offense has to break through with the way we've been playing the last two games. I'm trying to be optimistic. I really didn't like Calgary's game, both games, honestly. Yeah, I wasn't And good. I didn't like them against Winnipeg either. So I'm going to say we break through tonight. I'm going to be optimistic. Six, six, two Canucks. All right. McGregor, take her off. Um, I'm going to be a little more conservative, but I do think it's going to be a tough one. It'll be a fun one to watch. I think they're going to want to come out, you know, having something to prove after last game. So I don't know. I think I was being more conservative earlier, but I think I might even say the five, four final in overtime for the Canucks. Mm, Okay. And now I'll take it off. Say four three, uh, Calgary. Four three. 
And whoever gets the right thing has to make a good outro. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, just, just, All right. I'm just kidding. Okay, so yeah. is everyone ready for this outro that we're about to do here? It's a special one. It took four years, four years to make it. <laughs> am I am I doing this? This is the yeah, brand. Yeah. This it's is the unveiling of the brand new hockey hour <laughs> outro. Austin, outro. take it away. Take it, take it away. Thank you for listening to the Hockey Hour. <laughs>